friends, but it feels like it's on me. I was like 17 at the time, and by 18 I was signed, 19 I was on the road, uh, and like 19, yeah, the shake it got huge and the band blew up. So. This cancel culture, it's the new, it's the new um, inquisition. Um, you know, if they find out that you sinned once in the past, one, you know, weird tweet or one, did you do one thing? They will find it and they will, you know, and that scares people. Any kind of totalitarian ideas, we should be against. Pretty simple. Um, don't force people to believe what you believe. Have your ideas, feel, you know, express your ideas, but you know, the moment anyone tries to deviate you, you know, from those ideas, you're gonna cancel them, or you're gonna remove them from society, or they're gonna you know, lose their job, and that's not good. everyone. Uh, we all hear stories about the music industry, the good and the bad, what it's like signing with record labels, what it's like rising to the top, and what it's like going independent now where a lot of people who did rise to the top have become independent. Now here to talk with us about this is Mason Musick, you might remember from Metro Station, their hit song Shake It, and he's now gone independent, also working on a few new, pro new projects, and Mason, real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thank you for having me. So, yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah, we had you on before, <laughs> yeah. that's right. You know, I'm curious, I mean, if you could tell us a bit about kind of Metro Station and when you guys really rose to the top, because, you know, it, it hit you guys out of nowhere, yeah. right? I mean, you were like number one billboard all around the world. Number three, time. yeah. One in Australia, three, I think it got up to three here. Yeah, so I mean, like, what, how did that happen? Like, you know, you're sitting around, you just hear you're like one of the top bands in the, in the world all of a sudden? Uh, during those days, it was MySpace unsigned artist charts. Uh, we were like one of the top bands, and then you know all these record labels started hitting us up. They're like, "Oh, we see you're doing really well." Um, I was like 17 at the time, and by 18 I was signed. 19 I was on the road, uh, and like 19, yeah, the shake it got huge, and the band blew up. So, yeah, I mean, so you're. What's it like being 17 years old and having that dropped on you all? The too time? much money. Too many. Uh, vices um but you know i guess that's just you know how it goes um my my little brother's in the industry as well i'm like you know yeah when you're young and you have all this money of you can do whatever you want you know you can get a little crazy but you kind of have to learn to figure that out and, you know this is interesting because you kind of see musicians go one of two ways either that destroys them yeah. like with sublime and you know, nirvana or they kind of learn to balance it. And you actually, you actually see a lot of them kind of, yeah. kind of become a little more down to earth over time. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm curious how you dealt with that. Uh, it was difficult. Um, I think you know, just having like a you know strong support base of friends, family, and you know everyone, uh, all my loved ones. Um, but you're right; it destroys a lot of people. I think what I found you know crazy was even the recent uh, stuff with Marilyn Manson. I didn't think it'd be that crazy, but um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, in L.A. in general, people, you know, Hollywood entertainment, people have their demons and apparently they, you know, come out. Catch up with they them. Do, they do, they yeah. do. Yeah. Well, this is what I've been hearing, too, when it comes to the industry. Now, we've been interviewing a lot of independent filmmakers yeah. recently. <clears throat> and they're kind of saying, you know, off camera, some of them are saying it, but, you know, the way that Hollywood works is, you know, they get their tens of millions of dollars in budget. The actual production sure. usually costs a fraction of that. Then there's the handouts with the producers and you know, the, the, within the, you know, the top guys. And then a lot of the money just goes to like partying. 100%. And, and, and we can only imagine when it happens. I mean, have you, have you heard about this too? I mean, it's not, it doesn't all go, you know, towards <laughs> just making the movie, you know, or, or making the music video. I mean, I did it too. I mean, the label would give, you know, uh, Metro Station a budget for a music video and we'd be, you know, we'd make sure we bought, you know, drinks because we, we'd have all of our friends come to, you know, the, the music video and stuff. And, you know, uh, for one of our music videos, we, we rented out like a whole in, uh, inflatable ball pit. I mean, you know, no reason to have it. We were just like, we should just do it. Uh, so, yeah, we did we did stuff like that, too. But I'm sure it just scales up and up and up. You know, and one thing I've been wondering is when you start in an industry like that yeah. and you're you're still kind of a kid... You know, I mean, a young teenager. I, mean, I, I can yeah, look at myself when I was, when, I was, when I was 18. I was, when I was 18, I would, have, I would have not been ready for anything like that. Right. No one is. No one is. <laughs> and you still have to grow, though. 
And I mean, I, you know, I've, I've known you for a while now, and yeah. I know you're, you're a pretty down to earth, very logical, Thank you. level headed guy. Thank but, you. Uh, you know, I, I, I wonder how you achieve that being in that industry. You know, maybe, maybe you see what it's like and you kind of realize you, you don't need all that. Or, I mean, what, 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 what is the thought process? With this? Um, just getting to, I mean, d- you know, all the all the vices, all the drugs and alcohol. I mean, it just doesn't for me. It just didn't really. It wasn't really enough, you know. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. I like. I still like to have a good time, but I don't know. I think I just, <clears throat> for me personally, I just took it to a limit where I was like, uh, I don't want to be on this kind of like dark road anymore, you know. Um, so that was me personally. I know plenty of people that still, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, everything else, you know, are still uh, are still there, and it's it's sad. It's interesting. You said he had kind of this personal realization. Sure. What, what happened when you had that? You said he didn't want. You realized he didn't want to be on that dark road anymore. What was what was the moment? With I th- this? I think. I mean, I was just parting with the wrong people, you know. And you start realizing uh, maybe these people don't want to hang out with me just, you know, because of who I am. Maybe it's because you know I'm I'm buying all the alcohol and drugs for everybody. I mean, that's what happened to me. It was just I, I realized that the people I was hanging out with really just didn't want to hang out with me. They wanted to hang out with me because I was supplying, um, you know. Their addictions. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. And so, I don't know. It just It's something I just, again, I still like to have a good time just like everybody else. But uh, I don't take it to that level anymore. And I don't hang out with people that just, you know use. Yeah. Was, it, was this a gradual realization? Or was it was. Like, or was it was like gradual. you were like kind of hanging out one night and you're like, you know, like staring at the sky. It was gradual. Like, yeah. It's and it's and it's weird the kind of uh, who's not your friend anymore when you're like, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna be, you know, partying every single you know weekend. And they're like, well, then we're just not gonna hang out. It's like, oh wow, see, that's just mm-hmm. that's what it was all about. And, and I'm wondering how that was being in that industry still, where yeah. you know, you're kind of do you, do you become like an outsider, or are there like other guys you you meet who are like that as well or? there's other ones there's definitely other people that are you know um past the stage of just you know trying to get messed up all the time um some <laughs> there's some <laughs> yeah well and so you, you of course you had shake it sure, huge yeah. huge hit yeah. yeah you guys were touring everything with metro station yeah. what happened after that whole that kind of died down i mean what, me and uh Trace separated. I took control over the uh, Metro Station brand. Put out like an EP and a couple of singles. And then around 2014, 15, me and Trace got back together and then we you know, recorded like a new record um, and just started touring again. And so we've been back together ever since. Now, I, I know a lot of musicians talk about the kind of record labels pushing you to the top and not really helping you kind of manage that situation. They mm-hmm. kind of, they, from what it sounds like, and this is what I think a lot of people have trouble with, with the industries, they help you succeed, but they don't kind of help you deal with the success. Did, yeah. did you feel that? Yeah, and at the same time, I would be like, no one's there to mommy you. Mm-hmm. Sat, sorry to, you know, I know that kind of you know sucks for everybody to hear that, but no one's there to be your parent, and you know, the industry is a machine and they love it when you're making money and the moment you're like, oh, I need, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I need, you know, help or, you know, maybe you're partying too much and you miss an interview or you, you know, screw up playing a show live, you know, they're not there to pat you on the back and be like, it's okay. It's like you're messing with people's money. So, so at the end of the day, you know, it's like, I mean, just like any other business. Yeah. You know, so hmm. you can't show up to work drunk. <laughs> you know, although in music you can get away with it a little say, bit. Yeah, you can. You think, can get away I think with I've it. seen other ones. You can get away with it a little bit, but you know, after a while, they're like, "Look, you know, you got to be put on a. Come on, take it seriously, yeah. right?" Well, and, and is it really understood the industry that it's not really possible to kind of stay at the top? Is it? It's just understood going in that it's just not going to happen, or how is this viewed? Uh, I think every every uh, label that signs somebody knows an artist has you know an expiration date. Um, they might have some great longevity, but, uh, and some bands are able to come back through and, and cycle and get back up again. But usually it's, you know, you have your moment, just like a, just like a star or a, a supernova. You have your great explosion and then, you know, you kind of dim out. And then every once in a while you'll be, you know, there, there'll be like a Johnny Cash. You're like, you know, at the end of his life, you know, he had this huge resurgence. Um, so it's different. It's different for every artist. You know, and I know with you guys, Metro Station, that kind of happened because 
you know, TikTok and so on, met uh, Shake It became big again all of a sudden. Like, what happened with that? I mean, that song just keeps coming back, you know, over and over again. And a whole new generation of kids that never went to the shows, didn't buy the records, you know, probably didn't even really know who the band was. Uh, they've, they've just uh, found the song on TikTok and, you know, made all these videos to it. Um, you know, with no label pushing it or nothing like that, it's it's been pretty wild. I, I guess there are certain songs like that that just, you know, keep popping up and people, you know, I guess that's why it was a hit. <laughs> Still, you know? Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you a bit about where you're going with music now, but mm -hmm. I want to talk to you also about kind of how you've navigated the music industry and, you know, mm -hmm. being in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Because you... you Funny enough, so you were part of, like, the whole pop punk scene, you know? Yeah. But... You never really conformed to the system then. Yeah. And as the system changed to more like far left socialist values, you didn't conform to that either. No. And a lot of people, I think, are afraid of not conforming to yeah. it because they're they're afraid they're going to get kicked out of the industry. You've kind of proven that that's not really the case to some extent. I mean, what, what's what's how, how have you navigated this and kind of kept your character amid amid all this? I just I believe that people have the right to express their opinions. I'm I, I'm just I'm it's very crazy that that's such a radical <laughs> idea now you know and I don't try to push anybody's buttons I don't try to be you know I don't try to say you know crazy offensive stuff but I think that you know we're we're in a very polarized time right now and maybe we should listen to both sides a little bit maybe that's a good idea rather than totally you know cutting people off if they um I don't know they like certain tweets or they like, you know, uh, certain politicians, then they're immediately cut off and destroyed. I mean, even, um, I'm a huge fan of like Mandalorian and what's her face? Gina just got canceled. Yeah. Gina um, Carano, yeah, yeah. And I like her and I'm like, man, she was in like UFC too. And I'm like, I don't know this whole canceling thing. You're going to cancel everybody. Everybody's going to get canceled. You know, what are we going to, there's everybody's just going to get canceled. Well, and th this is another thing too, is the standards chain yeah. if you go, if you go back 20 years ago things that were totally socially acceptable yeah. if people dig up most comedians and most oh. entertainment from back then you, they could find something to cancel All people banned. on just about right yeah i mean and are you seeing a lot of people kind of freaking out about that i, I mean imagine the music industry we saw marilyn manson just recently you know? and that's and that's a crazy one because i, would, I mean although i'd say what he did was not socially acceptable even back then absolutely either, of course yeah. absolutely yeah, I think a lot of people are starting to realize that, uh, you know, the, this cancel culture, it's the new, it's the new um, uh, inquisition. Um, you know, if they find out that you sinned once in the past, one, you know, weird tweet or one, did you do one thing? They will find it and they will, you know, and that scares people. Um, I don't know. Do you, we're in a, we're, it's a tricky time. Do you think there's a method to the madness? You know, I, I think I think the way it's perceived a lot of times is it's selectively done. Totally. Because you know, they, you know, you can have politicians and photos come out of, of them having you know blackface and so on, and they apologize, yeah. and the media just forgives them, and writes it off. You have other people who you know flipped a table when they were in high school or something right. like that, and the media do a hit piece on it, and they never forgive them. Yeah. And a lot of it does seem to be politically motivated. Totally. But at the same time some of the guys in Hollywood and the music industry do align with that kind of more far left stance and they're not forgiven. I mean, do, 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 talking to people, I guess, in the industry, do you, do you think that they feel they're protected based on political stance or do they all feel like they're going to be targeted at some point? Yeah, I think they, I think some of them feel protected, but you know, they also, they also think they're fighting the system, which I, I just find so funny. I mean, you're not fighting the system if Every single corporation, all of Hollywood, you know, all celebrities, um, the majority of the mainstream, you know, news media, if they all agree with what you're saying, you're not really fighting the system, you know, like, so I don't know why people talk like that. It's like, I see that a lot in the industry. They're like, oh, we're, you know, fighting the man. It's like, no, you're kind of working for the man, <laughs> you know, you're kind of, <laughs> you're kind of working for the man, to be honest with you, you know, so, um, you know, and not that I'm some, like, revolutionary or anything. I'm not talking about anything like that. But at least be honest, right? Just be honest with, you know. You know, th this is something I, I've seen with you as well. That If you, I, I mean, this, this is what blows my mind about the punk scene. Yeah. You know, I was a kid. I was into it for a while. Then I kind of yeah. realized, I was like, wait a second. Like, isn't, you know, because they all started turning socialist. I'm like, wait a second. Isn't socialism about, like, yeah. big government? Yeah. 
And when you start realizing that they're in their you know lyrics and stuff talking about fighting the system, like you just said, right? Fighting, you know, kind of standing against big government and big corporate interests, but at the same time, the thing they're advocating for would create that yeah. or, or supports that. I mean, there's this real like logical mishmash that you have to go through to even I think go down that route. You know, but you haven't done that. I, I think you've stayed pretty. You know, pretty nonpartisan for yeah. the most part. I think you've kind of stayed independent, but you've, you, of course, are anti-socialist, anti-communist. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm curious how you view that within the industry. You know who uh, Jack Posobiec is? Yeah, yeah. He tweeted out something really funny. He said, uh, uh, "Punk is dead," and it was it was uh, a picture of uh, a tweet done by the Dead Kennedys, huge punk band, and they were, um, I think, they were tweeting out something about like from the FBI or it was like Mitt Romney or something like that. It was like. If dead Kennedys are tweeting out something from the FBI, right, or Mitt Romney, you know, they, I don't know what to say. You know, I'm not sure what has happened, you know, to punk. And I think that's that's pretty true. I don't know why the flip has happened to where they're, you know, full on, you know, big government, you know, big brother. We're all, they're all for big brother, but I don't know. But you're right. I try to just walk that fine line. I'll listen to people on this side, listen to people on that side. Um, if I disagree, I'll say so. And if I agree, I'll say so as well. But I don't think, you know, this, uh, oh, you have to be over here and you have to believe these things, otherwise you're canceled. That's not healthy. That's going to get nowhere, you know? You know, this, yeah, I think you and I are probably kind of part of the same generation. Yeah. I'm technically a millennial. But, you know, one thing that defined that generation, funny enough, is it was not conforming. Yeah. It was, you know, this, the, if you go back to the, the, what they said on, you know, TV during the time, it was heavily around not conforming, being yourself, individualism. How did they go from that to lockstep, groupthink, social justice, everyone has to kind of conform, you know, this, uh, this interest of the masses type mentality? Because you would think these would be totally incompatible. How, how do you see that flip having happened from, you know, the music industry uh, back then. It's a good question. I mean, we sent, you know, uh, communist Russia Bibles and they sent, you know, spies and infiltrators and we kind of flipped each other. Now Russia is like, you know, super traditional orthodox, you know, and we've become, we've, you know, tried to get rid of, you know, God out of everything. So um, maybe the Cold War, you know, <laughs> infiltration on both sides. I'm not sure. Mm. But, uh, something definitely I don't know just whatever this whole you know partisan divide is definitely not healthy for anybody and I, and I know you, you consider you know we've, we've of course talked quite a bit you, you consider yourself more of a classical liberal yeah and center I get center right I guess you know yeah. just yeah classical liberal yeah, but you know I'm a big fan of a lot of classical liberals you know my right. audience now I talk about for example Ludwig von Mises mm -hmm. young, he was a classical liberal mm -hmm. Frederick Bastiat the law he was a classical liberal mm -hmm. if you get into the old books on classical liberalism a lot of them were like some of the best anti-socialist anti-communist books no matter which ones you get into now you kind of saw the idea of that feeding into modern liberalism and even a lot of like the pop punk scene mm -hmm. in the early days this kind of fighting against the system against big corporate powers against any kind of monolithic you know lockstep system and as we mentioned they people have kind of moved into that but at the same time it was a, a tolerance of ideas different than yours you know I'm, I'm curious with yourself because you you've maintained that actually mm -hmm. why well you know but you of course don't affiliate with the the way the system has gone this far left. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of maintained your position with you know, hearing both sides and being pretty reasonable while not getting pulled into that real far left side of it that it's heading down? Um, just, I guess, you know, reading a little bit of history. I loved a lot of the stuff you did about, you know, the origins of socialism and a lot of the stuff coming out of France, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, finding out about, you know, all these postmodernists like Jacques Derrida and Michel Foucault. A lot of that I learned from like uh, watching, you know, Jordan Peterson videos and stuff like that. And um, yeah, all these bad ideas seem to come out of France. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And now, and now, what's even funnier than that is you have. Uh, I think it was Macron saying uh, the United States is becoming way too, way too left, and a lot of their, uh, you know, um, I guess I think he mentioned cultural Marxism coming out of the United States is really, you know, a little radical. It's like, oh. 
thanks France for sending that over here. Thank you so much. And now you're saying we're a little crazy. Okay. So yeah, it starts in France, ends in France. Yeah, for real. And I was and uh and so I guess for me I'm just I just do a little reading, research a little history, and you kind of you kind of find out where these, you know, totalitarian ideas go. Um, and maybe it's better to kind of check it quick before it gets you know too crazy. Yeah, and I know here in LA, actually, you know, you, you're not too far from where Frankfurt School guys yeah, started up. And, right over where I live, yeah. uh, they were on 26th Street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, it's interesting, kind of hearing from you know someone in the punk you know punk industry mm-hmm. still. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? The music industry still. Mm-hmm. That, I, I, you know, I think that a lot of guys like you are kind of seen as being kind of moving further left, but you haven't. And you've maintained this, but at the same time, you you really know a lot of the history on mm-hmm. this. You, you know, you you haven't fallen into where a lot of people I think see the industry going. I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm curious how you view socialism, communism through the lens of kind of your you know music and so on. Any kind of totalitarian ideas, we should be against pretty simple um don't force people to believe what you believe um have your ideas feel you know express your ideas but you know the moment anyone tries to deviate you, you know from those ideas you're going to cancel them or you're going to remove them from society or they're going to you know lose their job and that's not good so you know and i learned a lot of stuff from you know listening to your videos you know um so yeah, any kind of total, any kind of full totalitarian idea of like, if you don't believe this, then you're a bad person, or you know, um, that's not going to work for me, mm-hmm. you know. Now a bit of where you're heading now with your with music. I know stories were coming out. I remember seeing a few of them. The metro station was going to get back together. Mm-hmm. Then the virus hit. Yeah. And then you kind of did this side project as well, uh, social order. Mm-hmm. I mean. Where, where, where have things been with the music and how has the virus impacted this? Well, nobody's touring right now. Um, me and Trace were able to release one song called I Hate Society, um, but we haven't been able to, to get together again to finish up the record. We have a bunch of songs, but we've kind of just been in a position of like, <clears throat> you know, we can't, we're, we can't finish up the record right now, so there's no reason to, you know, to do it. I mean, if, if, if he's able to fly in L.A. or I'm able to go to Nashville at some point, then we will, but, you know, right now we've just been quarantined and not seeing each other. Um, but Social Order, it's a new group I started with a bunch of my friends. Uh, we only have like three songs out. Um, I'm actually going to play a new one for you today from the band Social Order. Um, but yeah, a uh, couple guys from different bands. Uh, Matt from the Mowgli's, Lou from New Politics, and Anthony from uh, Pray to Lights. And we've never actually been in the same room together because of the virus, obviously. So yeah, it, it, that's it's, the it, name. It's, it's a new social kind of order going on, you know. It, it's interesting <laughs> seeing that, that you can make a, a music video and produce everything without ever meeting in person. Yeah, nowadays you can. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and that kind of brings me to the, the next part, too, that I want to talk to you about kind of going independent. Mm-hmm. I, I know it's a bit hard with YouTube and stuff these days, but you do see a lot of artists starting up their YouTube channels and it brings up the question of why you even sign with the record labels and yeah. get successful on, on YouTube and you know through your own in, you know, independent channels. What, what is the value still of the record labels and the music industry as it was? I mean, there's still a value. They're, they're a big bank. They'll give you a, you know, uh, if they give you a huge budget or a huge record deal, you know, then it's pretty great. I mean, you'll be signing over a lot of what you own, you know, um, and I would just caution any artist to make that decision for themselves, you know. I mean, there's something nice about getting a huge record deal, you know, but you're kind of selling a lot of yourself, you know. If I'd say do it independently as long as possible, but yeah, if you get a huge record deal, I don't know how you could turn it down, really. Oh, really? It'd be hard. <laughs> so is, is the trade-off worth it in your experience? I guess. I mean, you know, not if you blow it all, not if you blow all your money. It probably won't be worth it. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the secret. Yeah. Don't don't blow all your money be a little on, smart. on parties. Yeah. Be a little smart. Don't like immediately get a record deal and like, oh, I need a new car and, you know, try to invest. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Ma- manage it, right? Yeah, yeah if you can. Don't, don't, don't think it's going to last forever. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe, that's maybe check secret. out the new, uh, who are those Reddit guys that were trying to like uh, bring up GameStop? <laughs> maybe listen to those guys, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Great. So what's the future for music with you? Where are you you heading next? Just writing a bunch right now. Uh, I've been in the studio a lot. Um, And just trying to, you know, write about what's going on. Um, The new song I'm going to play for you today is is about that. It's called All All By Myself. And it's kind of 
one of those songs where I was just, you know, feeling really alone during the pandemic. And um, I think that's where that's where a lot of people are. I mean, there's nothing really else to do except, you know, uh, for me, you know, write music and, and uh, order Uber Eats. And that's about it, you know. So... And, you know, this this is something that I've, I've seen musicians talk yeah. about, is, is that music catches on because people can relate to it, mm-hmm. right? Just like anything. You have to kind of capture something people can relate to and something yeah. they can feel. A lot of them become disconnected from that, I think, within the industry because their whole life becomes the industry. Um, but being able to really touch on things that people care about yeah. and connect with people through music seems like something that creates success, but a lot of musicians have trouble to do as the industry starts changing them. You know, what, what have you seen with this? For me, I'm kind of at the place where like, you know, I, I, try, to, I try to write about, uh, I don't try to get political, but I try to write about um, current events, you know, what's going on in the world. I mean, there's so many love songs you can write before you're like, okay, maybe we should, you know, stop writing songs about a girl for once. Uh, Metro Station was really good about that. Shake It was kind of like that. It was, it was uh, you know, uh, you know, relationship kind of a thing, but I think as you, as you know, as I've gotten older, I kind of want to write about different things I'm seeing in the world. You know, again, not I'm not a political writer. I don't make you know super political songs, but I think it's important to like see what's you know, kind of see what people are feeling and and uh, you know, try to reach people. I mean, that's what music's about, right? You know, reaching people through your music. So yeah, that's actually, where I've kind of been at. And with, with social order, you kind of hit that too. It was it was. Mm-hmm. I think your first song was like. And living in the lockdown type song. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, what was the thinking behind that one? We were all quarantined, and uh, I was just like, guys, we, you know, we should make a music video. And they were like, well, how are we going to do that? I'm like, okay, well, everyone's just going to film from their homes, you know, and we'll all just put it together. And it worked. Uh, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy to see, like you were saying earlier, it's crazy to see how the, the industry now we're able to do something like that where yeah we don't all have to be in the same room to make a music video we don't need a huge budget we don't need you know lights and camera crews I, you know i had my my girlfriend film me you know just on an iphone and i think everyone pretty much did the same um so yeah and i think people really you know relate to stuff like that you know just super low budget and you know you don't need all the glitz and glamour to to reach people now the song, your new song, mm-hmm. you tell us about it real quick. What's this one about? Uh, All by myself. Uh, I wrote it during the quarantine. Um, oh, the extended quarantine. <laughs> I wrote it a couple months ago. Three, three weeks to stop yeah, the spread. Yeah, three right? weeks yeah. to stop the spread. Uh, three masks. Uh, what else do we need? Um, three shots now. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Think you need three now. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I wrote it uh, when I was feeling pretty down, actually, um, like everyone has. I'm, you know, people have. Obviously, there's people that have had it way worse than me. But, yeah, I just kind of wanted to put down on, you know, paper what I was feeling. So. I mean, I guess just last question. Anything else you want to tell people about, you know, your work and the industry, mm-hmm. you know? Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, it's a crazy business. And, um, you know, people that are trying to get into it, you know, good luck. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, just like anything else, I mean, it's just it's it's tough, and the industry is a machine, and a machine does not the machine does not care about your feelings. To quote Ben Shapiro, you know, uh, so if you like that, if you're you know, if you're able to do that, then great. Um, but going back to your thing about being independent, if you can be independent, stay independent for as long as you can, you know. Uh, again, unless you're offered like you know a huge deal, then I guess take it. You know, hard to turn that one down. Hey Mason, real pleasure having you on Cross. Friends. Thank you for having me. Got a lot of friends, but it feels like it's on me. Fake ones, real ones, some like family. But when the lights out, when it dies down, coming out the shadows of the background. Only thing around is the sound, and it's all I need. You see, if I gotta dance all by myself. You know it's alright, you know it's alright Like I don't need nobody else You with me tonight, you with me tonight Turn it up, let it out like there's no one around Got a rush from the sound and I can't turn it down I gotta dance all by myself You know it's alright, I'll be alright All by myself, oh, oh, oh. 
because of you. Looking for your face inside this lonely room. But when the lights go, going solo, I don't really need you in the dark no more. I'm not gonna waste my time, gotta make a move. You know, if I gotta dance all by myself, you know it's alright. Like I'm